The one thought that uh, I was struck by foremost is that the future is going to be about uncertainty. Uh, and in managing the future to the extent, in managing the future to the extent that we can manage parts of it, it is going to be a fundamental requirement in us to be able to appreciate this idea of uncertainty and to learn how to deal with it in a productive manner. I'm going to come back to this uh, at the end, but what I want to uh, focus on now is how, as we had envisaged, this topic of managing the future itself actually operates at three different levels. One for us as individuals, another for the firms that we lead or manage, and the third beyond, you know, including but beyond mere economic considerations for the nation and society as a whole. For us as individuals, managing the future is going to be about dealing with a far richer option set, which of course also means a far more complicated option set than we have around us today. Both within and outside of our narrowly defined careers, opportunities and risks are going to multiply manifold. Now, Pramod Basin uh, from Genpak yesterday talked about it from a seller's perspective when he said that the war for talent was, go was just beginning and that, you know, just in his industry, ITES alone, uh, there's going to be a gap of half a million employees. That talent can't be taken for granted anymore, tables have turned, etc., etc. Now, that may seem to be like a good thing for, uh, you know, a number of among uh, of people here who see themselves as, you know, manager, employees, uh, thing. But is it really? In the same panel, we had Dr. Mashelkar making a very important point about the pyramidal structure of talent. The fact that there's extremely talented people at the apex and that 1% of the people uh, have 90% of the talent if measured purely in the sense of economic worth. Not only does this structure <coughs> mean that we, as individual agents, need to be in continuous learning mode to climb this pyramid, it also means that the pyramid itself is upgrading rapidly, so to say. Now, the challenge of this moving goalpost, so to say, is, is not just going to remain as difficult or as important as it is today. It's going to intensify for individuals across the entire spectrum. As, you know, as was pointed out, there are you know, 10 to 25 percent of graduates who are fit for employment in Mr. Basin's industry. Uh, to those who are, you know, higher up in this um, uh, pyramid of employability. Uh, it, it's going to matter to all of us. Managing the future at an individual level, therefore, is, is about continuously reinventing uh, re uh, ourselves, reinvesting in our skills. It's not just more of the same. It is a, more of the same because that's also important, but it's also about some very different and new skills. For those who can rise to the challenge, it is going to be highly rewarding. Santrup Mishra, I think, had the, some of the attitudinal factors uh, down pat when he said, you know, the, when he talked about the need for being radical innovators who are passionate about what they do, who are willing to ro rock the boat and make a difference. In terms of firms, it's been very apparent by listening to a number of speakers over yesterday and today uh, that it, it really is going to be business as unusual in the years to come. And we've heard stories of, you know, how Indian companies and companies operating in India have made giant strides over the last 10 years. But the next decade is going to be even more interesting. Competition, not just for markets, but, you know, in many instances, more interestingly for resources, is going to intensify and it's going to broaden in scope. We just talked a bit about the competition for talent, but, you know, for energy, for other resource input, for capital, most importantly for ideas that competition is going to be of a different order of magnitude. Uh, it is in this context that I found a number of speakers actually focusing importantly on the issues of firm level competitiveness, the idea that it is firms, not countries or industries that are the basic unit at which competition takes place. Uh, and as I said, the competitive landscape, whether you know, it's competition across industries, whether it's com competition across geographies is, is far broader today. Mr. Hong Chen yesterday outlined a number of thoughts about how the Chinese and Indian firms can collaborate effectively. I actually thought embedded within his speech were a number of pointers in respect to the competitive realities that these firms face uh, at an individual and uh, at an industry level, uh, which, which are important to uh, note and take back. Uh, I think in, in terms of this, this managing the future at a firm level, 
a number of themes that the convention chairman had outlined in his initial address yesterday, do we, and, and which he just touched upon right now, do we as leaders or managers understand the key inflection points in the industry? What part of transformation or dissipation stages are we participating in? Are our antennae tuned to the right frequency in a continuous and active exploration of the environment? And are we able to discern the signals within all of the noise? Do we know when to get out? All of these are important. At the third level of managing the future uh, for which in a way that impacts the nation, the society, I think uh, my colleague Peter Schwartz yesterday had talked about the three Indias. Uh, India, one of the 10 crore people, including most of the audience here today, uh, who are at the leading edge of the 21st century, the 30 crore who are in the early to late industrial times, and the 70 crores in the agrarian India. Um, and, and we all can work, choose to work with slightly different numbers. Uh, but a number of other speakers also highlighted the reality of the stratification and the need to address it. Uh, Mr. Kalyani talked yesterday about the 65% population contributing 22% uh, of GDP. Mr. Krishnamurti was talking about growth not being balanced across sectors or uh, regions, etc. And the one thing that struck me in this discussion was that the uh, story is not just about one of absolute scale of these challenges, but also about a relative scale. A wide range of countries are increasing their ability to compete for talent. Industrial economies have rediscovered and are reviving the debate on education. Other e emerging economies are rapidly catching up to the erstwhile leaders. Uh, you know, China, South Africa, Brazil are all investing in, in, in upgrading their assets to foster even higher growth rates from different strata of the society. Uh, so managing this future at, at this level is about a number of things knowledge-driven growth, deepening access to knowledge assets, recognizing the link between good go governance and positive outcomes, etc. These, you know, therefore, were the, in, in summary, the three distinct levels I found that the topic actually did work very well. Um, and I will very quickly just touch upon the key takeaways which I found from, uh, from, this, uh, uh, from the sessions yesterday and today to cut across all the three levels of, uh, of uh, uh, managing the future. And these are these five. One is to start by actually recognizing what is manageable versus uh, you know, what is beyond one's remit. The second, this, uh, you know, what I've taken from Peter's book, uh, this idea of inevitable surprises and actually doing something about it. Because you know, while we see all the evidence, there are a number of instances where you know, we've not actually done anything to, uh, uh, to change our strategy or our actions. We heard uh, a lot about technology and the possibilities that it creates. One of the themes that I actually found embedded in most speakers' uh, thoughts but never named was the idea of integrative management. And, and the thing that, yes, while the future is going to be about you know, superstar specialists who will be compensated for their skills, it is as much about our abilities as managers and leaders to integrate the inputs from these specialists and create the right action for the organization, for ourselves, or for the nation. And finally, uh, as, uh, I'm going to come to what I started with, which is this idea of managing uncertainty, which is the idea of understanding that the future is about different scenarios. It is not one straight line, one linear future with a 10% plus as the optimistic case and 10% minus as the pessimistic case future.